Our planet is boiling up, and we don't fully know why. As climate scientists long predicted, burning fossil fuels has changed the makeup of our atmosphere and heated our world, impacting everywhere from our cities to our coastlines. But now something's happened that we didn't predict. Temperatures across the globe have lurched upwards beyond expectations. So can researchers explain this extra heat? What does this mean for our climate? And what might our future have in store? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today I want to talk with you about the crazy heat we've seen the past couple of years. This video is going to break down what we know about its causes, and crucially, what we're still trying to figure out. But I read that we already know- Well, the truth is, we don't have all the answers yet, even if it's tempting to jump to conclusions. Now, here's something we know for sure. The world is getting hotter. That should hardly come as a surprise, since we also know why we're still burning fossil fuels. That is an accelerator pedal for the, the temperatures on Earth, and so we expect the temperatures to keep on rising. This is Gavin Schmidt, who, frankly, is one of the world's leading climate scientists. He's director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, which works to monitor and understand the different processes affecting our climate. For decades, researchers like Gavin have been predicting what would happen to the climate vehicle if we keep our foot on the accelerator pedal, and whether that's changes to the planet's temperature, increases in extreme weather events, or sea level rise. These predictions have been borne out by reality, time and time again. When you predict things that you actually don't want to come true, and they come true anyway, right, that's no, that's no fun. And so you're in this very odd position where you, you would have rather have been wrong as a scientist than to have your predictions be confirmed. And so that's anxiety inducing. And every year climate scientists make a prediction for how hot the following year will be. If you want to predict how far a car is going to go, you need to take into account how much you're pushing on the gas, wind resistance, hills. So to predict the next year's heating, you need to consider stuff like greenhouse gases, air pollution, what's happening to the sun, the oceans, and these predictions do a great job, with the year's temperature normally landing somewhere in the predicted range. Or at least they did a great job until 2023. Taking everything into account, the temperature predictions for 2023 indicated it would be hot. Not exactly a surprise. Global warming means that all years are now hot. Right, but it didn't look like 2023 was too likely to be a record breaker. And yet, you know, kind of starting in March, you know, we started seeing these very, very warm temperatures in the North Atlantic. We started seeing globally warm temperatures uh, through, you know, June, July. And then by the time we finished 2023, it wasn't just a record warm year. It was a record warm year that by a record margin, right? And so that was very shocking. Now, you might be thinking, like, I did at first. Why exactly is this so shocking? More fossil fuels means more warming. And even you made a video explaining how climate scientists expect warming to be speeding up. But here's the thing. We've had our foot on the planet's temperature accelerator, which gradually heats the planet. That's as expected. But suddenly the car has lurched forwards and we didn't see it coming. So scientifically, you can think of things as, oh, well, this is a bad thing that's happening. But if you predicted it, then, you know, it's a bad thing that's happening, but you understood why, why it was going on. So we had the situation in 2023 where bad things are happening, but we didn't also know kind of why, right? And that's discomforting. And the discomfort didn't end when 2023 ended. In March 2024, Gavin wrote, if the temperature anomaly does not stabilize by August, then the world will be in uncharted territory. Well, spoiler alert, temperatures didn't stabilize and 2024 ended up being even hotter than 2023, over one and a half degrees hotter than temperatures before the industrial revolution. And even though 2025 isn't record breaking so far, it is tracking really 
really hot. And all this matters. Not just because the planet's temperature was shockingly high, but these shockingly high temperatures have real impacts on us. 2023 and 2024 saw heat waves, record ice losses, wildfires across the planet. All these things mean lives upended lives lost. Okay, so the past couple of years have been weirdly, worryingly, dangerously hot. Why on earth, pun intended, is this happening? So here is where it goes from scientists shocked to scientists really need to get their act together. Now, there are loads of different factors that scientists are teasing apart to work out what the deal is. And don't worry, climates, I'm gonna get to them in just a moment. But first, we need to understand the two big questions at the heart of all of this. I mean, we've just felt the car of global temperatures lurch forwards. We need to understand what kind of lurch it was. Was it just a jolt, or is the vehicle now speeding along faster? And secondly, is that lurch happening because of something we didn't predict, but we do understand? Like maybe our car's now going down a hill we just didn't see coming? Or is there actually some brand new process going on that scientists didn't know about? Like the actual engine is doing things we don't actually understand yet. Okay, so like, is this just a blip? And is this change down to some brand new process? Exactly. And the answers to these questions matter, right? Like, if our planet is just doing something because, I don't know, a volcano went off and we weren't expecting it, that's one thing. But if the planet's doing something because it's now starting to respond to greenhouse gases in ways we don't understand, well, that's a different, much worse thing with important consequences for our future. Well, I would really like to know which thing it is. Trust me, so would climate scientists, which is why they're hard at work to tease all this apart. That's how progress is made in science, right? You see something that's a little bit odd. Right? You go, huh. And then you say, okay, well, it could be this, 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 and this. And it takes you a while to work through all those different possibilities. Some of the possibilities are from us humans. So greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide are obviously important. And then on top of that, aerosols are a massive part of the puzzle. These aren't just the things you get out of spray cans, they're all sorts of particles and droplets in the air. These actually cool the planet overall, but recently we've been cleaning them up, most importantly from shipping pollution. So less aerosols would mean less cooling, which means more heating. Then there's loads of natural stuff that influences the climate. Because yes, despite what some might claim, scientists do absolutely take natural factors into account. I'm talking stuff like volcanoes, changes in the sun's intensity, the El Nino fluctuation in the temperature of the ocean's surface. Okay, so loads of possibilities, but which one is to blame? Well, not one single one of them is to blame. All of these factors are playing a part. And recently, Gavin has tried to add up all the different influences human and natural. And you end up with a situation that 2023, our best guess, is still a little bit off. 2024, not so much. 2024 is actually pretty well explained. So together, all these factors seem to explain why 2024 was so hot. But 2023 is still looking weird. Now, there's some research indicating that changes in how clouds reflect away sunlight could be a crucial factor. Okay, but then what would cause the clouds to change in the first place? I mean, sticking with your car analogy. Thank you. Is that just a bump in the road, or is the climate's engine entering some kind of mystery turbo mode? And the answer is, we don't know yet. I feel like I should have seen that coming. So, to sum up, it's complicated. We've got a part of the answer, which is all this stuff combined, but it seems we're still missing a piece of the puzzle. And let's be frank, this sucks. It means we don't fully understand what's going on with this car we're in and whether the rest of our journey is now gonna be different. And it also sucks because whenever the science isn't clear cut yet, that leaves the door wide open for people who claim to know what's up. 
I've seen so many people comment. It's definitely just a blip. Or say, these years prove that the world is now heating up beyond our control. And I'm sure this video will get those comments too. But as frustrating as it is not having all the answers, and trust me, we climate scientists are frustrated too, that doesn't mean we get to jump to conclusions. Our own internal processes have been extremely slow. There's been this void over the last couple of years uh, where, not total nonsense, but, uh, but, but exaggeration has been, has, has been left to thrive. But it isn't the case that suddenly, you know, after one or two years, we are off the charts in terms of uh, everything that could have been expected. So as weird as the last couple of years have been, that doesn't mean we need to rewrite the climate textbooks just yet. I'd probably get loads more views if I called this video something like global heating enters death spiral. But the point of these videos is to tell you honestly what we know and what we don't. Well, honestly, I appreciate it. It must take a lot of work piecing a video like this together. It means a lot that you recognize that, even though you are just a scripted alter ego of myself. So tell me, how do you fund such an impressive production? Well, I don't want to sell you all things you don't need, so I don't do product placements or even monetization. Videos like this are entirely funded by my amazing patrons. And in return, they get early access to videos like this one and exclusives like my full conversation with Gavin. If that sounds like a good deal, sign up over here. If I wasn't a fictional character, I would totally do that. But look, you've said it's too soon to jump to conclusions. Right. But when can I jump to conclusions? When will climate scientists know what's happening with this car metaphor? Gavin reckons the crucial next step is to have a look at the state of the art climate models. These computer models simulate all the important physical processes, like the water cycle, movement of the ocean, reflection of sunlight. So scientists need to finally run them with all the things we know happened in 2023 and 2024, like changes in air pollution, strength of the sun, etc, etc, etc. And hopefully that will help us understand what we're missing. When will we be able to say, okay, well, now we know what's going on. By the second half of this year, uh, I'm, I'm more confident that we will have a, a synthesis of what we expect, and then we will be able to see whether there is still things that need to be explained. And obviously I'll be making a video once we do have a clear cut answer. Oh, and I'm also working on a video about the crisis facing US climate research, something Gavin and I also spoke about. This is a real threat to our ability to solve climate change, work out what's going on. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss either of those videos. And while you're clicking on things, a like and a comment go a long way to helping videos like this one reach new people. Okay, here's my comment. What do we do while we're waiting to find out what's going on? I mean, if Earth's motor's working weirdly, does that mean we're screwed? Well, we still understand what's behind the vast majority of the heating we're seeing burning fossil fuels. That means we know what we need to do to stop the car, take our foot off the gas. And by that I mean the coal, oil and gas. As weird as the last couple of years have been, our best evidence still indicates that stopping emitting, reaching net zero, is what it'll take to stop the planet from heating. And don't get me wrong, that is hard, but we have the tools. The challenge is getting our societies, our leaders, to actually implement those solutions. And that's something we can all work on by making the changes we personally can and by pushing for the changes that can only come at the societal level. You just said that net zero would stop the world from heating, but like, would it? I mean, aren't there loads of factors that mean the world would still heat up, even after emissions stopped? Oof, that is a topic for a whole other video. A video that I actually already made, and here it is. Okay, until next time. Bye. Bye. How was that? Do I look confused and concerned?